Kane up for Leicester, Leicester Lee Keenan. Um, Mark Bowen, uh, first child and eldest son of Jim Bowen. Yeah. Not, not many people know that. Uh, Lee Keenan, eldest son and first child of Kevin Keegan. I didn't know that. No one knows who my dad is. So have you just have you just solved it? Could be. I don't I'm know. Best, I, so much, I mean, no, no, somebody does know who your dad is. I'm sure your mum might remember. Nope. Or is that not something to talk about anymore? Oh, you mean you can ask her yourself, but she won't tell me. Okay, my 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 story is not that dissimilar. So, well, the hunt continues, then, eh, Brian? No, I gave up a long time ago. Man. I, I will never stop. Welcome. welcome I will to... never stop. <laughs> what are you saying about Lee? You'll never stop. And Mark, how's your dad? Oh, we know that. Jim Bowen, isn't it? Of course he is. He's dead yeah. now. So... Sorry yeah. about that. Jeez. All right, Jim. Peter. Go. Welcome to Golf Kitchen. Welcome into my new home. Welcome to Essex. Lee, start with you. How All are right. you? How are you? Where are you? And what have you done today? Oh, Joe, it's been an interesting one today. I am, all, I am good. They're one of them. I am in Bristol. And uh, I got stuck in a traffic jam in Sainsbury's car park today. Oh. I didn't know such things were possible. I was in there for half an hour. <laughs> in the car park. In the car park. You there, was see people, it. there was people in high visits, chaperoning cars. Half an hour. Is that just because it was busy? Yeah. Everyone buying their venison to take back with them. Yeah, you know, obviously. Get that German vibe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the highlight of your day, was it? Definitely wasn't the highlight, but it's it's the most interesting point. So what, was, what was the highlight then? Go on. What's you guys? What are you Mark? saying? Seeing your faces. Mark? Yeah. How are you? Where are you? And what have you been doing today? I'm good. Um, I, I'm i in Kendall in the Lake what? District. Was that where you moved to? No, no, no. Visiting friends. Uh, on en route to Belfast for Christmas. Nice. And then, uh, what did I do today? Went to the, the post office. Went to Boots. Did you get, did you get stuck in a traffic jam? Anywhere, wasn't that, no traffic up here actually. It's quite uh, uh, should have gone to Sainsbury's there then. Um, uh, well, and yeah, that was it. Looked after the Bairns. There's two babes now, there is. Yeah, what was the second one? Uh, boy, did you call it uh, Brian? It was, it was third option, definitely. Yeah. Brian Bowen. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the alliteration, do you know what I mean? BB. B, like, it's a nice bit song. Marvel, isn't it? B, BB Gun, look. Like. BB. Well, okay. You could have put it in the middle name. I would have accepted that, but not to worry. There's still time, Mark. There's still time. Um, listen, normally, I can't remember the last time we spoke. Normally, when we get together, we are discussing an album that's, that's just come out. And you made it, and I heard it, and we talk about it, or it's or it's nearly come out, and blah blah blah, and there's tours announced, and everyone's getting excited about this, that, and the other. But we're at the end of 2022. I am so so not having a basis of stuff to ask you about. I'm literally going to wing this next half an hour. Right. But well, but welcome to my life because that's how I've literally won the last 50 years of my life, just by blagging my way through, through everything. So hold hold on tight. I got four bits. Four things written down on my bit on my paper, which are facts for this from this year. Ninety-eight shows, thirty-five different festival appearances, one hundred and sixty-four days on tour, which is just over five and a half months. Jeepers! In twenty-four different countries. So my first question is to Lee. You have got two minutes to name all twenty-four countries now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's I'm go. Yeah, you want to? You want to go? Let's go. That's no, because I haven't got the list, so you could just just name. Oh, it to any other I've got. No, I'm not that good. Brian, I'm always ready to step up. I am going to look down at my table, so it looks like I'm looking at notes because I saw that on Parkinson once, and it seems to work. 
Oh, yeah. okay. I'm going to do the same. <laughs> Just, yeah, check that. Is there? The time. Um, you went to, this is after 18 months. So this is like this year and towards the, the tail end of last year as well. Because you, I think mean, you remember it's kicked off with the installs back at Louis. And then it's just gone pretty mad since then. Um, how was that? And that's a crazy question. After doing, after not touring or gigging for almost two years, you really jumped into it feet first. Yeah. How, 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 I just can't understand how, how it, was it physically exhausting, mentally exhausting? Or was, or was you so ready to do it again? It was just a adre adrenaline situation. I mean, it kind of depends on where you catch us. You know what I mean? If you were, if you were to ask me the night night of the Louis gig, different kind of vibe to like two, three weeks ago. <laughs> but like it is, it's. I mean, it's all those things. But it's also like one of the big things I noticed whenever we got back was like there's just a lot more gratitude kicking about to be able to do this kind of stuff, both from the audience and from the band and from everyone kind of around gig gigginess um so yeah it's just a, a, the excitement back and like the appreciation for being there and that hasn't really gone away in the 18 months i don't think definitely more tired 18 months in that's for sure uh, yeah. and it yeah did did a lot of turn like i mean there was not it was 90 issues this year so, like, if you yeah. include the US and stuff from last year and the yeah. short crawler kind of campaign, it's been very intense. Um, but great. But great. And you've got a month off now. I hope, I hope we've got December off, I believe. Uh, this, yeah. yeah, there's no, no, no shows in December. Yeah. Well, obviously, you're busy, which is the first time in some time. Um, how was it going to new places? What can you remember some of the new places you went to? You went to South America for the first time. Yeah, South America was insane. It was one of the most incredible moments of our, of, of our career for me. I mean, when we played Mexico, that was something I've never seen before. Because obviously, the first show we were supposed to play in Mexico was uh, like a small show, wasn't it? Like a hundred cap room or something we were meant to go to, and then it got can they got cancelled and then something else came in and then that didn't happen and then we were going to go again and then it just sort of fell out of Canada and then COVID hit so then the first uh our first show in Mexico was was going to be a was it 4,000 cap room yeah. we, did, we did a Vans show the day before which was great and then when we did the the 4,000 cap room it was like a sea of people dancing like all the way to the back yeah, it was cool. Like, never seen a whole room that big go that crazy. They are they're fanatical, aren't they, about music? You get it. Oh, I mean, generally, music, anyway, not just rock music, but guitar music, band music, but pop stars, just looking at people like Lord and Dua Lipa and stuff like that. They're all huge mm -hmm. in Mexico and the surrounding areas as such. The whole of South America was a mad experience. You played some festivals out there as well. Yeah, we did the yeah, Lollapalooza did. run. Lollapalooza run, which feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Has <laughs> done it. That's wild. Mexico was the last one. Mexico was like our own show. We did like we did Lollapalooza. We did a stereo picnic in Colombia. Which the rest of the shows crazy. were Lollapaloozas, and then we did our own show in Mexico, and. Like that was just as Lee said, like Mexico had been cancelled like five times or something like that. So we had to squeeze it in. But yeah, that was that was the start of the year. That was that was that was great. I like that Bowen's face is slowly disappearing yeah, so the, on the screen. Remember those remember those Chad things we had to have when we were kids? Chad. Uh, That's what you look like, Bowen. I can't see your chin, darling. That's it. I'm just uh I'm I'm sucking my notes. <laughs> I saw it on Parkinson's once. <laughs> no, no, that, that, it was way too cool for that. Um, 168 days on tour is a lot of time away from home. My question is because I can't fathom how how you get through that 24 hour period. 
how you can relax and rest properly and take out time for yourself for entertainment, mental health, knowing, knowing at some point later on in that evening, you've got to turn it on for two hours, intense, bang, in front of everyone's face. And then, and when that when that's over, you come off stage and it's all gone again for the next 24 hours. Is that is that tiring? Do you know what I mean? Is that quite tiring to do that day after day? I don't think of it like that personally. That I think coming back from from COVID and going into the shows, my back has been like immensely better. I've had hardly any troubles with my back. I've felt stronger and, and healthier. And playing the shows have been so much more enjoyable than before we ended for COVID. You know that that was starting to become a struggle for my for my back so everything hurt every day now it doesn't so every time it comes to the show there's this i don't know just this euphoria of just going mad for those two hours and then when i get off i'm knackered i go to sleep and then it's what it's weird it just sort of happens <laughs> i don't you've think got, about it you've got time to, re to recuperate and and get your head back together and do it all again depends how many shows we do in a row i think you got sleeper buses now. Mm -hmm. When you when you tour America, you're on a bus with a bed yeah. on. So you are going to bed and then waking up in a different city. Is that generally the way? And then you what? You've got all day to do what? Sleep. <laughs> uh, I've got kids. I go on through to sleep. Sleep and eat. Yeah, he's first good. in, last out, isn't he? First day, first in the bed, last out. That's good. <laughs> mm, those bunks. You have got to make the most of it. Um, yeah. Is it hard to be away from home? Yeah. Is that, is that got easier over you? I mean, I'm just slightly different for you, Mark, because you've got little ones running around now. Have you, I don't know if you've got little ones that you've not told us about or you don't know about. And then that's a silly question. You don't know about it. You might have. I've been spending all my time looking for me dad, and I? So maybe I should start <laughs> looking for me kids as well. <laughs> I'm buying photographs of uh, of power plants and stuff. Nice. <laughs> um, does it get harder or does it get easier? Those tours, generally? Uh, no, okay. it, it gets harder. I mean, you try and do it in more clever ways. Like, we, we tend to not be out for longer than, like, three weeks and um, we did a lot of making up in covid so like the u.s tour we first did was six weeks and some other tours have been longer just out of necessity but yeah no it doesn't get easier it's significantly harder to leave whenever your kid can tell you that they want you to come home and they miss you and stuff so pretty savage but um we do it more we do we do do it more cleverly cleverly is that a word more yeah. Um, Never these days try to like you know we have family out when we can and we kind of just try and be as as present when we get back which is hard i mean that's the the, the hardest bit is whenever you come back and you're like completely and utterly exhausted and then your brain doesn't function in like normal world like you know that cycle that you've described you described about like having this like you know an hour and a half two hours every night where it's like this thing and then everything else is about resting and recuperating and then you, you chain yourself up for it so like that takes a, a toll and then you kind of get back and you're like all you want to do is help out but also yeah. you're like so um but yeah so it's just trying to be good at that is the and that must you took you had um paternity leave this year i did yeah you regenerated into Tina. I did. You've done that before. I, I don't, that must be a doctor thing, obviously, because you regenerated before. I did. Over the years. Uh, over the years. There, there was a lot of regeneration in the... Brutalism. 2017, yeah. Um, Ollie, heavy lungs, you regenerated in for once, a couple yeah. of times. Jamie, Jamie from, from St. Pierre. Yeah. Um, and I actually think, I think last year's class to breathe, Lee generate, um, regenerated in Tina for a couple did, of days. Yeah. Joe's the only member of the band that's done every Idols gig. We say. Who's yeah. done Dev? I remember John 
Ollie, uh, okay, did Dev. Ollie did, did Dev at 2003. Damien and Dev, Dev as well. Damien and um, Dev. Did Damien do Dev? Uh, he did Dev. Oh. Was I doing me then? Yeah. Uh, two, no, that was 2003. That was Ollie. Zed did you once as well. Zed's Tommy. Yeah, that's right. That's Jack, Jack Looker from Dits. Zed did, uh, he did uh, John. Yeah, he did. Oh, I don't remember anyone doing Dev. When did Zed do John? Oh, Primavera. Oh, wait, Damien's done me as well. When did he? Oh, come on, was this on your yeah, bike? Years ago. Um, I taught him. I I remember teaching him some of the songs. It was during. It was just before brutalism. Damien did Andy as well. Did he? <laughs> when oh, we no. when we when we went to the Isle of Man, Andy 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 like broke his wrist, and Damien did our Isle of Man and Manchester gigs. I made a film about it. It was it was good. Could we film? I think Damien could uh, cover for John at some point. He could be the fool. He could be yeah. idols. And then he'll have to cover for Joe one day and then he's done. He's done it's got to think of idols. If, that's, if, no, if Joe's the only one that's done all the gigs, if you're away somewhere and you've got a gig that night and Joe's like, I can't do it, I've got a Veruca or whatever. It's which one are you? That, which yeah. one are you between? I mean, John, I mean, John, could John sing and play the drums at the same time? I don't think he could. Between you two and Dev, which one would go, all right, I'm going to do it. Which one would be Joe on the on the on the quick? I mean, it would, it would probably be. Me. I I wouldn't remember any of the lyrics. Mm. And Dev can't. Yeah, but nor does Joe most of the time. Oh. Lee. <laughs> that's not a problem. He's always asking John. What well, he remembers are. more of them than I do. That's for sure. <laughs> Did you do it, Mark? Right, I'm doing it. Fuck it. Could I, would it? Uh, I mean, it depends. Lead. Not not on a, not on an idol's gig. It's not right. Oh, but then you have to let all the, all the people down. I mean, I mean, we would let them down if we did it without Joe, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine me getting out? Like, oh, all right, lads. Here we go. Yeah. Don't even know any of our songs there. Just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. It's probably. Uh, it's gonna be. Uh, it'll be lonely for Christmas uh, without you. Yeah, you just give us a bit. Of a Christmas what you want. Do all you want. Um, highlights this year. What were your own personal highlights of those 98 shows or whatever? Kim? Does any anyone particularly stay in your mind? As in, fuck, that was great. Yeah, Mexico. Mexico. The one yeah. hour own show in Mexico. Um, That's a lot of things this year as well. It's more Primavera. That was sick as well. You see, I know, I see both those shows. I admire yeah, you did, yeah. Primavera, McGear, busted, all busted. And Mexico, I had to have a bucket on the side of the seeds to poo into. <laughs> oh. What? I don't know what I know. Well, I had the green apple, green apple squid. It was... It was, it was oh, there's the burn. Um, yeah. An intense oh, so you get uh, My you. highlight, well, my highlight was probably... Be shitting in the in that bucket, like do you know what I mean? Quick shit. Four thousand. I mean, that gig was pretty incredible. Um, what was my highlight? The bit dead air. Um, the, uh, the glass, the brutalism Glastonbury thing. Oh, we that did. was fun. Uh, we we did uh, brutalism in full. Yeah. At, I'm aware, Mark. I know I wasn't there, mate. I heard about it. Do you know, it was, it was it was really funny. So like, it was literally like we had been transported back in time to 2017. Yeah, the gig was exactly the same as any of those gigs. It was like pure chaos. We like, spent more time in the crowd than we did on stage. Brilliant. I listened to it only a couple of days ago. The whole thing, and it sounds it sounds like you recorded five years ago. Did yeah. you rehearse that a lot, or was it just? I know we you re- you played the commentary the night before on the hottest yeah. things I went to. That was you jumped a few, quite a few songs on that set. Yeah, and you rehearsed it much before that, Glastonbury. No, not those songs. We did a couple of, uh, like, said like Rachel Koo a couple of times, just and White Privilege. But other than that, 
We've been playing. Oh, we started playing a few of them live again, though. We we, yeah. we started. Standals creeped its way back into the set. Um, well, um, well, creeped its way back into the set. Yeah, that's a winner as well. And it should, I don't think it should ever be dropped. Well done. I know it was it was there right from the start for a lot. A lot it, but it, it, it doesn't land. It doesn't land. It doesn't no. It doesn't land in that way. You God. you think it would? Like we all think it would. We'd be like, wait, it'd be sick. But it just you don't so, think it's a crowd pleaser. Doesn't seem to be. No. I disagree. From being in that crowd, I disagree. Um, Stenhouse syndrome sounded the best I've ever, ever heard it. On yeah. Everyone. It was tight as fuck. Really fucking good. I think we've never played it right once in the past. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> the thing is, it, it's so fast paced and so choppy. I think that like being on in ears helps. Oh, I think. Once years ago, why you dropped it from the set, and every, all, all of you said the same thing. Well, John can't, John can't play that fast in any yeah. It's just that like, it is mad, but it and sounded you absolutely nailed it. Yeah, it doesn't sound right to slow down as well, so you, you gotta keep it up. Yeah, no, so that was that was my highlight. I love that. It was it was good. You, you can tell, like, if you listen to the recordings, actually, it's on the. The it's on somewhere, yeah, it's on street, it's on Spotify now. You can listen to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, but you can, you can hear the fun, like you know, Joe's funny in it, and like, yeah, you can hear there's like, you know, we're slagging each other off on stage. And it did, it did feel like you can hear how Dev feels. <laughs> it, it felt like a recording from 2017 from that tour, not yeah. just smashed together again. It wasn't, let's just go back to do it for nostalgia reasons. It felt like it was a lot of fun, yeah, it's great. Just do it once more time, though, and just make sure I'm there next time. I mean, it is. But the way, is all those all those songs like they were great in a set, and I think that like as we go on, they'll just the, the, there'll be there'll be more heavy rotation. I think as as we go further. I mean, Rachel Koo's not going to get played. It's, it's not the one, although it was fun. It's fun, but like you know, all the rest of them are sick. Um, how long? How, eighteen months since Crawler came out. Now eighteen uh, months, just over eighteen months. No, not quite. It came, came out in November. Oh, just over yeah, just about thirteen months now. Thirteen months, yeah. Uh, how? How do you when you look back? How do you feel about the album? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, um, I mean it's, it's it's a dead heat between it and Brutalism for my favorite Idols album. Um, I'd say it's probably my favorite Idols album. Like, it's definitely, um, still, I'm still like so happy with it. And it's still like, we're still really like discovering bits of it live and kind of like becoming tighter and tighter. And I think we're good, we're, we're, we're getting more and more of that intensity and more and more of what those songs should be live out. Um. So yeah, it. I I love it. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's one of the best things we've done. I oh, agree. Did you? Has the the amount of songs from the album changed in the sets over this last year? Yeah, it's like um, it's about the ebb and flow of the set and trying to work out what what goes in. Like, um. And then there's there's ones that are just out no bangers and like so like uh, the wheel keeps like it morphs and changes on a tourly basis on a nightly basis but it, it it's pretty solidly in the set and then things like MTT kind of duck in and out um what's it called what's the, uh, meditate okay what's that one called med med um that one comes in and out and it, it it's sick. And then I can't remember our songs. I always, I, I when I when I first heard it, some I always thought MTT was going to be that perfect replacement to Colossus, but it, it didn't happen. Been, it doesn't have a punchline. The punchline's the wheel. Do you know what I mean? Okay, okay, yeah. I get the, pun, the 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 kind of like the punchline and the the kind of build up of that song kind of gets there, and I think live it kind of. You would have to go straight in, which I don't think we were able to do. 
and um Colossus is just so perfect. And I think that like, you know, the whole the whole like splitting the crowd thing that Joe does in Colossus is like I think that is a really important like precedent um for the gig. I think what Joe does there is like one, he kind of like for festivals especially, splitting the crowd so that people kind of get what's about to happen. So if that's not your bag, you can kind of run up the middle and get yeah. out. Um, but also it kind of, I don't know, it just kind of, it open it opens things up to the chaos. Everyone knows what's coming now, which is great. And then it kind of... So it yeah. it's, it's a wonderful show. That's a thing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's it, really the, only, the only thing that's annoying about it as a set opener is you get all hyped up before you go on stage. Like we used to like, you know, do like hurdles and yeah. stuff, and get, like your blood pressure up because it is, what's really great is going on stage with your blood already pumping and then yeah. kind of going in thrash. But you get, you get up and you go, and then like me and Lee don't play for like a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and then what we do, it's like, it's like a Mogwai song. So it's like, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Do you all walk on stage at the same time now? Because it was a time during Colossus when individually you'd walk on just as your bit was going to start. Does that still happen? Oh, yeah, no. no. We all just go on. It was just Dev at one point. 30 seconds, just Dev. That's how it was, on his own, looking all moody. And then everyone joins him. And it all goes, hey! hey. You're, all on, you're all on now. Um, and Rottweiler, still there. Yeah. yeah. Even before brutalism, it's still there. Yeah, yeah, so, it's it's the winner of that. Did you, there was a version of the end, stroke into Rottweiler. Is yeah, that still the case, or is it not? Oh well, it's we stopped doing it for the last tour, uh, but then that was also kind of part of uh, Tina being there and doing. We we had a very like strict set for Tina to make it a lot easier for her. So things like that didn't get chopped and changed as much. That American mm. tour was pretty straightforward. And then when Bowen came back, we kind of stuck with it because everything was just there. Uh, we we there. definitely changed it up from... Um... Did like two, one change, I think, in the last three shows. Uh, and then the last show was a festival anyway, so it, everything got cut completely to do a festival set. So, But I think things like uh, The End and some of the other crawler songs kind of didn't make the set anymore because the set had become so well curated. Bo had uh, written a set where a couple of songs would just get swapped out here and a couple of songs would get swapped out here and it, and it just worked. Like you didn't have to redo the whole set to make the whole ebb and flow work. It yeah. was just a couple of changes and it, it felt great. So yeah. it was like, I mean, looking back at far, obviously the photographs of set lists you see all the time, no matter where you are, <clears> but it was lovely to see stuff like television dropped in one night out of nowhere stuff like mm. that and it was just like I mean stuff like Danny and the Delco is going to be there because it's it's that kind of song and Mother's going to be there and stuff but it's it, your catalogue now is so fucking vast well you see and, Lee Lee says that but actually Lee we we in Australia or America we completely changed the set okay the set used to like the set used to always have uh peace and ballroom and never fight a man with perm exactly in the middle. Yeah. And now it's got it right at the end. Right. That was Australia. Yeah. And I completely forgot we went to Australia. So I know I was not even saying, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about our last tour was America. Remember um, America? I was at the, towards the end of the song, the end of the uh Yeah, the so end. basically we just uh, it, I it was Melbourne, I think. I was like uh, so I I I I'd love to get to a place where you do like a Radiohead where you rehearse your whole back catalog before you go on tour and it's completely different every night. Um, I'm sure you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we'll like we'll definitely do that as time goes on. But um, what we did in Australia, which was just really fun, was like we just like it was all the bangers right at the very end, and it kind of meant that um. The rest of the show had a little bit more nuance to it, I think. Like the Australia, the Australia sets were 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 quite different. Yeah, they were. It's true, and uh, I enjoyed that. But it, it you know changed. Now, I mean, next time we're out, we'll probably have another thing to be playing. Crawler, two Grammy nominations, double noms, mate. 
Um, <laughs> oh, tomorrow. We, oh, oh, Two dinners, man. No, no, man. No, no, man. Um, oh, tomorrow went to number one. Joy got Ivan the Novella Awards. What did Brutalism win? The hearts of the people. My heart. Absolutely. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, Grammys, that's, that's pretty big, isn't it? Are you going to go over there? Yeah, we are, sadly. About a nine hour fucking show, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be yeah, an yeah, hour. Nine story. hours. It's no, it's long as fuck. I don't think it's quite nine hours, Lloyd, but take I believe it is. It's um, yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go over for it. Like it kind of, you know, that um that sort of thing raises our profile hugely in America. Both, yeah. Um, and I just want to go to a party at Elton John's house if I can. So, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Elton. I'm assuming there's going to be parties. I know Rick Rubin always does a party, so we could go to that. You can get get go to Beyonce's party. That'd be nice. I think, yeah. Can we meet Mr. Bird with Kanye West and um and get him to produce one of your albums in the future? That'd be nice. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not now at the moment. Every March time, I think that's coming up. Uh, February, yeah, is the Grammys. Um. Did you carry on writing when you was away last year? I know you're always writing to an extent. Uh, we did. We even attempt it. I think we. I think we attempted to attempt it, and then we were all just like, "Well, we did. Yeah, we did a couple of days in Europe, and uh, then stopped. <laughs> I, know, I, think we, I think we did some in America for a bit as well." It was really like whatever we did was very sporadic in that way. It just okay. wasn't wasn't right. Album five, obviously. Mark. Um, what's it called? When's it out? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna catch him off guard then. Oh, um, it's got you. It's fuck. <laughs> oh shit, he said it. Um, is it a different approach now? My question is every single album you've launched, you've four albums now, I've literally done that. Bang bang bang. Mm. number one Grammy nomination stuff like that does that put added pressure on you to write when you're writing another album are you right do you write for us the crowd the fans or do you still write for yourself does that make sense um, is there more do you have more pressure now going after the back of a, yet another successful album to, to do it again or are you at the world where like you two you knock out your biggest album, Josh True, then you come out with Rattle and Hammer, fuck it all up for everyone. Every, every album has the same kind of cycle where you get to the point where you realise you should be probably thinking about writing an album. We then all start trying to write an album. We completely like lose our minds in what it's supposed to be, get completely lost. And like you get huge like self-doubt and creeping kind of like severe imposter syndrome um and then you then it kind of like the album reveals itself and then we kind of push it push it through and then once we get there it's like bang 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 and normally in a few weeks the album's written and and then we're good to go to the studio um and we're 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 like we are definitely waist deep in the self doubt. Okay. <laughs> Shit yourselves, kind of like, um, what the hell's going on? What is it? What is it going to be? Um, but it is it is slowly revealing itself, and I think that um, I think Christmas is a useful break for us, and I think this time away from touring is a useful break for us. Um, and yeah. I mean, I'm really excited about it and I'm like excited about writing and I'm excited about like the prospect of it. But um, yeah, it always has to go through that cycle because it's got to, you've got, you've got, you've got to remind yourself of why, why you make the music and who you're making it for. And it is us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's when we're, we're at our best when we're making things for us, you know, crawler is, 
I guess crawler is like crawler exemplified that where we just started making stuff and doing things that we were interested in and we wanted to do. Um, and I think, yeah, we just need to reposition and recenter ourselves, but it's hard. It's hard after making an album like crawler because it's like, you know, if, if we had made another ultra mono or, or even like kind of gone back and done something similar to joy, then we'd be in a kind of more comfortable spot with writing wise. Cause we could either, we could either be do more of the same, but just, you know, a bit more expanded or whatever, or, or we could then choose to be adventurous, but because we've chosen to be adventurous already with crawler, it's like, I, okay, what do you, we, how do you, yeah. how do you go more adventurous than yourself when you're adventurous? And I guess that, um, that's where we're at and also then it's about like you know how far do you take the risk do we do we or, or how early do you take the risk do you take it do you take the risk so big on the next album and then 18 months two years down the line you're thinking what the fuck now i mean so i mean my, my dream scenario would be right album five is like um uh Experimental is not the right word, but we we just we we go full like out there, and it's a bit weird, and it kind of like alienates some people. Even we're a little bit uncomfortable with it, but it's kind of cool, and we're really excited about it. And it, it's just this exciting thing. And then album six, we do very shortly after, and it's pure like garage rock band, garage recorded band where we just kind of go in and do you know, do it in five days, like brutalism style and, 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 and knock it out. That's kind of what I want to do. Um, but then I would say that, wouldn't I? <laughs> um, Lee? It's like, I don't know. I never know with this really. They always think that my, um, my theorizing of what an album should be is, doesn't really mean anything it always comes down to this moment when a song gets written and then everything sort of aligns and the album turns into something and then everyone starts understanding what's going on but um i never really i never really have this like idea of what the album should be because i never think it should be anything it just it's it is what it is at the time when it's written. It's exactly what those songs are. There's always a theory. There's always a uh, uh, a basis in which to work from, but it doesn't mean that that's exactly what it is. Like crawler is crawler to me is still different than what it was started to be. It, it grew a lot during the making of it it was it grew the most out of any of the albums through the making of it um and even some of the songs were were finished in the studio it's that it was that on the line that that album was made it was a whole experience a whole journey so when it goes to another album i'm i'm just like i'm just there i want to be there and be ready for it and that ready to uh, right for it. I mean, it's just well, I don't have that theory of it. It's slightly a lot of crawler was written during lockdown, if I remember rightly. Mm. Uh, but this year, not we're not in that world anymore. So, is there more of? Will there be? Has the will? Has there been? Or will there be more of all of you getting together in a room and seeing what happens? Because that wasn't an option last time. Yeah, I mean that's that's been happening. Um, I don't know. Kind of, I think. I think certain things lend themselves to that happening, and then other things kind of lend themselves more to kind of one person really fleshing something out until they get to a point where it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um. That's kind of the. That's the bit I enjoy. I kind of, I, I, I've kind of reached the point where I prefer writing on my own, or directly with Joe, and then kind of bringing it to the guys, and then it becomes, 
exciting. Because <laughs> a lot, a lot of the stuff that me, a lot of the stuff that me and Joe write is like together, or like I write on my own. It like, it's 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 not as exciting as an idol song until it becomes an idol song. You know, until you get John behind the drums, and Lee adding his bits, and Dev kind of just you know being Dev. I think that's when it that's when the ideas kind of like work um but yeah it's kind of it's really all over the place i have to say to me. so um <laughs> we're not we haven't worked it out obviously i don't know what's going on next year but i imagine there'll be a lot of gigs and a lot of touring you've announced some festivals for next year already mm. where mike are you going to go out if you end up doing UK tours, European tours, American tours, all that kind of stuff, and all the festivals that get filled in within about some lovely, elaborate Glastonbury slot, et cetera, et cetera, with the same songs that you've just done for the last 18 months? Or do you hope at some point throughout that year that that new stuff will start getting bled through, will start getting added to it? Or are you a long way from that yet? Oh, I mean, if there's if there's stuff that's ready, if we have an idea of what's going to happen, we are always playing new stuff. <laughs> we can't ever stop ourselves. We are always like, no, nah, no, nah, we won't, we won't. And then two yeah. seconds in, you're like, let's go. It's like, oh, even, you're like the, the like an hour before the first show, it's like, should we just chuck? Yeah. It in? <laughs> I keep saying that I can remember a gig at the PRS Canteen. 2017. Do you remember that little canteen gig? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's we just you... got our gear stolen. Uh yeah, I broke I broke Johnny's guitar from John. Yeah, you got your gear stolen the night before, and um you debuted Samaritans that night. And there were and there were four lines of it, four lines of it basically, four lines in the chorus was the whole song. That's <laughs> what Joe just was saying, sang those four lines over and over and over again. We we're thinking this song needs to be fleshed out a little bit. That was very early. Very early, because someone oh, put it on. Um, I was like, "No, no, no! Take it down! Take it down!" Oh, yeah. I like, um, <laughs> I like uh, hearing uh, back back then. I haven't seen anything these days, but hearing different renditions of our songs on YouTube. Oh yeah, as, they go as they've grown. But I think that my still, I think one of my favorite moments was in Paris, and I think we played great live before Joy was out. And just before that show, um, Marco had said to us, look, just don't play any more new ones. Just hold them under wraps. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as we got on stage, Joe was like, this one's for Marco. It's called Great. Yeah. <laughs> I think Never Fight a Man with a Parham was the only song off uh, Joy that we hadn't played live before. Really. Played live, yeah. Because there was that little tiny tour, the little seaside tour beginning in 2018. Yes, yeah, yeah. When you, when you came to South End that on there. I think yeah. we, in South End we got Dan in the Delco for the first time ever. Yeah, I remember that. In Kent, the night before they got, you had television, but it wasn't called television on the set list. It was called something else. I can't remember what it was called, but it wasn't called television. Oh, what was it? It called? was called, what was it called? There's a picture on the set list somewhere. It wasn't called television, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's, that's it, might be, it might be something like TV screen or something like that. It was along those lines. Yes. But that was the, there was like, what, 12 dates in that tour. That was probably the last little tour. And then Joy came out and it all went big boy, big boy bollocks, didn't it? Yeah. And a bit crazy. Yeah. Um, at the end, imagine this is, right, we, go, let's flip. we don't know what's going to happen next year because it hasn't happened yet. But if I we mean, see, we know what's going to happen next year. Oh. No, you've got a diary, Mark. No, what what you think's going to happen next year? Um, what when, if you get when you get to the end of next year? What do you want to look back on? What's going to be? What do you hope is going to be your biggest achievement next year? Good guy, I got to. <laughs> Roast dinner at Christmas in England. Oh, you. mate, that is. December 25th, roast dinner. English roast getting, dinner. He's not getting one this year, Mark. That's the only roast dinner I'm having all of 2023. Just Isn't one. It? Just one. I'm going to save it all the way to that moment. I'm going to thank I, you. Uh, no, no idea. I don't know what this this year coming is supposed to bring. I mean, go, going off this Zoom, my, mine, is, mine is losing this. Like, you know, getting back to the fucking puff bow. That's what I want. Losing what? What the fortunes there? 
That's his dad chins. He's all right. Dad, he's That's it. I, I, honestly, since having to, since having my daughter, um, I've had a non-stop Christmas. You know, you know, like Christmas, you kind of, you you just let it slide, whatever. You do what you want. Yeah. So since since having my daughter, who's my four, um, <laughs> I've literally had a four-year Christmas since then. I've just I've, I've not paid attention to anything that goes in. It's been pretty sick. Hasn't it, Lee? Oh, it's like, it's like, it's I, I love it. While watching me on tour. I mean, it is while watching me on tour. It's pretty sick. But yeah. now, but I look around myself right now and there's two massive tubs of strawberries. You know, the Haribo strawberries, the big one. But tubs. Not, not the healthy fruit. Like. No. <laughs> yeah. Then there's a box of celebrations, you know, the tub. There's two tubs of Quality Street. A tube of Smarties and a tube of fruit pastels, and that's just in sight here. We doing? Well, people kept buying me things. Wiz isn't even there. Yeah, he is. He came back, and really? I'm I'm forcing the chocolate on him. <laughs> I think you'll take it. Also, I have this right here, which I'm very excited about. What's that? You can't eat that. No, you can't eat that. What does that do, Lee? That's a guitar pedal, oh, does, nah. and it does everything. Oh, you said that about all your guitar pedals at the top. Oh, and then that one does everything. The same. This little baby right here. <laughs> it's the boy. That's the lot made. Does that replace them all? Does it? You only oh. need one. The board's gone. The amps are gone. It's just that now. Brilliant. So you need and that pedal. Your guitar pedals, both of you, are going to get. Like, they already are quite large. I, I just got green lit to have mine get larger, so that's sick. For your green light. You're going to take up two seats in the front row, just for me. Yeah. What is it, in one word, in one word, Lee, what does that one do? The other one's done. That, that pedal, literally everything, yeah. does everything. Oh. The it's the Lord of the Rings of pedals. Is it? Yeah, you know. You've said that before. The Lord of the Rings of pedals, Brian. <laughs> That's the bloody lot. That's all you need. Yeah. You never get that. You never did get a tooth fix, did you? Nah. It's brutal, isn't it? Hey. Oh, he did. He did get it fixed. I got it fixed a few times. Yeah, it just kept coming. Oh, he did. It's, yeah. kept it's not the look of a dentist, though, is it, Mark? Nah, but you know what? It is. It, 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 it was. I did use it to manage expectations. <laughs> you know what I mean, people come in, they're like, "I want," and then they see that and go, "Oh, oh I'm going on. See ya." Right. Um, you're gonna get. You're gonna get a nice little quick fire, because. Let's go. Because why not? Because it's no, because oh, it can't end for me, and it can't end without that. But thank you very much for that chat. I'm, I, I still didn't find out what album five was called. It's the only reason that we fucking turned up, and you didn't lag on. So do we know it's called? Hey, album five. I only, it's the only reason we're doing this chat, and I still didn't find out. So never mind. I'll ask yeah, you. but Bowen looks really pretty right now. So he looks beautiful. Yeah, he does look beautiful. It's nice. It suits him. Let's not worry about album five. Let's just yeah, let's not worry about album five. Let's think of this hair clip, man. Look at him. Um, um, nice. This hair clip can do anything. What does it do? <laughs> does the lot, Lee. Does the lot, Lee. Does the bloody lot. Right. 20 questions each. Lee, you historically, I've done about 30 golf kitchen interviews now. You are still the worst person at the quick fire. Yeah. No, yeah, quick fire. No one after. still has gone Damn other it. than me left the room to find the answer that wasn't the definition of quick fire but yeah you got the answer I did yeah after about two minutes of looking at the old chip wallpaper on my own unbelievable Mark let's go what's the best track from Crawler first one you think of see he's, uh, he's now a contender for the worst at quick, quick fire isn't he uh, progress Okay, uh, Lee, what's the best band you saw live this year? You saw a lot. Miley Cyrus? I didn't watch her. 
didn't you? She was on after you. I, I, don't, I don't remember anyone I saw. Oh, no. What a wee bit of my wee mate. I, I, oh, good God. I didn't Do watch it. Did I watch anyone? Did I watch it? 24 different countries at, at 98 different festivals. You didn't watch anyone else at all. Yeah, I watched loads. What was it? Anyone you remember? Hey, Bo. Bo. Who did we watch? Um, who were the best people we watched? Uh, oh, fuck, um, no, he, no, this is, he'll get this question later. Okay, you can just pass, leave, pass. Pass. Oh, right, sorry. pass. Oh, sorry. Mark. Mark. Yeah, Cats yeah. or dogs? Oh. Dogs, mate. Get on with it. Do you know what? I used to be a dog guy. Then I got Steve. Steve the cat, mate. Cat's pretty sick. You've only got Steve until you can get a dog. We know it. That was the idea initially, but now Steve. No, we've also inherited our neighbours. Our neighbours' cats in more often than Steve is, to be honest. <laughs> um, Lee, you want to play, you play before? Where would you like to go? Well, I didn't know what you said. Where would you like to play that you haven't yet played before? Uh, the Fiji Mountain. Nice. We've got plug sockets there. I've heard about it. Okay. Mark, favourite film you saw this year? See, he should have got right. favourite but, band. I should have got favourite film. Uh, hold on, hold on. You'll get it, you'll get it. Did you watch any films this year? Films? I've got two kids, Brian. Uh, oh. Do you know what? It was probably fucking... Encanto or some bullshit that I actually really enjoyed. Like a thousand times. Yeah, it was probably it was probably the, the seven hundred and thirty third time that I watched Encanto. Actually, that 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 broke me and I broke through. And uh... <laughs> that is your life now. Welcome to Parenthood. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Lee, favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, oh, do you know what? What's that? Water bottle flavored ice cream. Hot water, water, water bottle with a sheep sheepskin cover. They don't make that. Thing. They don't make that flavor. Okay, I think it, it, it's it's mascarpone gelato. Right, thank That's you very the much. Best ice cream you've had. It's not. What's your favorite? <laughs> what's your favorite? You can't go into any ice cream shop in the world and go, uh, guys. That's the mascarpone for God's sake. You guys did a lot. What's your favourite flavour of ice cream? It can't be mascarpone. You, it's lovely. What's your problem, Mark? <laughs> what's the best thing about being an idol? Not very well. Best thing about being an idol is. Uh, the gigs, the gigs, the gigs. Gigs are the best thing for being an idol, I'd say. And the ca- the ruddy camaraderie. <laughs> you know, Jolly good these, fellows everywhere. When these, guy, when these guys, when we all clamber onto that bus at the end of the night and only half of us brush our teeth, and the next morning we all get up and drink some coffees. That's, oh, a, that's the best thing about being an idol. Lee, guilty pleasure. What? Your guilty pleasure. Have you got one? He's worn a bond. Not really. I just do whatever I want. Um, Def Leppard, you can say that if you want. No, I love him. What, even that new album? I don't feel guilty about Def Leppard. I don't feel guilty about Bon Jovi. I don't feel guilty about any of this shit. Oh, all right. All right. How dare you? How... Dare you? How <laughs> very dare you, Mark? Don't swallow, Mark. Don't swallow that, please. Yeah, get out of your mouth. You choke. Put my nose. <laughs> get out of your mouth. It would. It would make a fantastic footage, though, wouldn't it? Well, well, choked, yeah. Hold on, hold on Lee. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I've lost where I am now. Um, Mark, uh, your favourite crisps? Mm. Oh, these questions, man. I hate um, that word. Crisps. What? Crisps. 
Oh, big fire. Very, very, very solid crisp. Very solid. Uh, solid. Um, Lee. Indian, that's me. Lee, your favourite dinner? Oh, chicken, KFC, chips and beans. Boom. Oh, Martin, the best album of this year. Oh, uh, oh no, that was last year. Ah, um, the, uh, oh, I am smashing quick fire. I you really are, are you? Um, there were quite a lot of albums released this year. Maybe he could mm-hmm. speak better if he didn't have a hair clip in his mouth. I, I was, I was, mm-hmm. just, yeah, I still want to be that rudely and say it. Oh, uh, you look only for I like the Jock Strap album, that was good. The what? Jock Strap. Okay, Lee, what's the strangest thing you put in your mouth this year? Hair clip, see, he's already got the answer. Okay, do you want to oh, ask you know weird stuff, mate? What are you talking about? I'm always putting weird stuff in my mouth, you know, bit of chewing gum. Like, like, like a toddler, bro. I mean, he's, he's you know, like, I'm like, oh, what's the that word wet? through his mouth? That's how he feels it. You know, what's what I mean? that wet thing on the table? I'll put that in my mouth. You gotta cover all the sockets on the bus, yeah. Did it come? He is. Terrible liquor. I like that. It's good. Um, Mark, what's the funniest thing that happened on tour this year? Is it Lee licking sockets? Can you remember laughing a lot? <laughs> Do you know what? It might have been when Dev was asking uh, why, <laughs> where his shoes were <laughs> when he left his shoes outside the bus on the last show of America. Uh, and watching him try oh you weren't there and then he was he couldn't open the door of the toilet <laughs> he kept pressing the other door so this door kept opening and he's just looking at the toilet door waiting for it to open ah uh, come on something oh, fu- right. something funny how ever happened uh, I don't know okay Lee best TV show you saw this year Euphoria I'm a bit I was a bit late to the game but I watched it all this year and it was absolutely sick. It was fa- absolutely fabulous, yes. Um Mark, what's the worst it thing? Was. Mark. Yeah. What's the worst thing about being an idol? These chats. What's the worst thing about being an idol is the uh, quick fire round there isn't a, you know what, there's, there's there's not many downsides that's nice that's nice I reckon that's what that being answered that's what like, Mick Huck would say simply for me he likes his job do you like her making uh, the editing job really difficult by constantly changing position no, we'll just leave it as it is, mate. It's fine. Oh, Lee, your favourite idols video? Well, I love the one I made this year. Oh, you did, didn't you? That weird one. Wow. Didn't, didn't expect an insult, but all right. What's weird an insult? You made a weird video. Unbelievable. Like, insulted. insulted by the fact you made a weird video and someone recognised that it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's the opposite of weird? It's normal. It wasn't normal, was it? It was a weird video. It was normal. It was normal for me. Was it? <laughs> That's what the inside of Lee's brain is like. <laughs> um, Mark. Is Mark. Talk to me, Brian. Mark. Talk to me. Mark. Talk to me. What album are you listening to now that we should be listening to too? Um. So I'm really into death metal. That's, that's, that's my big discovery of uh, 2022. So uh, there's a band called 200 Stab Wounds. Uh, oh, no. they got They got a new one. Actually, it's pretty sick. I see. Um, but the the one they released last year is like, the riffs on it are like... Okay. He's not wrong. Like, like the vocals are like whatever, because it's all like... Okay. Really, I don't listen. Riffs are... Lee, what's your best track from Crawler? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I've forgotten all the names of the songs. Do you know, Beach and Ballroom. Yeah. It's not, it's the wheel. But then I don't know. I'm thinking of the ones I enjoy playing live. So there you go. Mark, what's your favourite ice cream flavour? Um, Hot water bottle too? Ch chocolate, I think. Oh, no, she oh. does. No, strawberry. Strawberry there, is it? Is it strawberry? It's, it's mascarpone and you know it. You're just a snob. Oh. Uh, so it's, it's, it's you know I do when I go to an ice cream place, I do I do a tree. I always get the chocolate, I always get the strawberry, and then I always get a wild card. Pistachio, it was this year, which was actually really good. Lee, I mean, your story, bro. <laughs> Lee, what's the best thing about being an idol? Bowen. But absolutely, um, Mark. Your guilty pleasure? Um, my guilty pleasure. Um, gone into a lot of death metal recently, Brian. <laughs> um, this is, uh... Lee. Step wounds, yeah. Lee, cats or dogs? Dogs. Best start. So quick. So perfectly. So quick. Mark, do an impression of Lee. Here, that video I weird I made wasn't weird at all. Were you talking about me? Nothing abnormal going on there in its entirety. <laughs> Lee. <laughs> Lee, your favorite film of this year? Or the favorite film you saw this year? Uh, I don't know. I've watched every film there is. Um, what prior to this year? Like all of them, all, all everything that came out this year. And you liked them all, did you? I'm actually. Do you know what I'm really excited about watching? Which I'm watching tomorrow night. The Banshees are is issuing. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 very good things. I cannot wait to watch that, and I reckon it's going to be my favorite film of the year. Okay. That's a bold statement. Okay. The, the optimism is... Well, yeah. I, love, I love all his other films. They've been amazing. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like he won't let me down. I feel, I, do you know what? I'm going to put my money on the table. The director might be my dad. A bit young, I think. Why do you always have to go my dreams? Is that where you got your inspiration from? What, me dad? No, for the, for, yeah, for the, from the, for the all videos. For all my videos, my dad is my inspiration for everything. Mark, favorite food? Favorite food? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Um, fuck. Like fried chicken. Fried chicken, of course. Lee, favorite crisps? crisps. Oh, I get fucked. Do you know what? I don't like the words so much that I don't eat them. Okay, it's not true. Well, anyway. That's all fine. When do you see me eat crisps? <laughs> well, someone gets through those bags, Lee. It's not me, it's you. <laughs> Sorry. Eat a lot of crisps, man. You really eat a lot of crisps. Mark, the Go best on. band you saw live this year were. There we go. You saw there something. We... Do you know what? A lot of these quick fire questions. Require memory, which whenever you're a turn musician, father of two. Um, hold on, let me have a look at this. What are you going to look at? A list of all the bands you saw live this year on your phone. No, normally it's like it'll be some band that I've never seen before, and I'm like, oh, they're cool, and then download it. Um, yeah, actually, um. Doing real good, bro. I don't know where I am. Do you know what? I'm going to be really boring and say the same thing I always said, but it was Richard Dawson again He when he was supported Pavement. That was Fine. a good... Pavement were ruddy, ruddy good as well. Who do we see? Like, Primavera? Did we not? Lee, we're getting towards the end. What's your dream collaboration? If you could work with anyone, who would it be? I said it last time, Lady Gaga. You didn't give me that answer last time. 
Yeah, I did. No, not to me, mate. Well, someone asked me who I'd like to collaborate with. I said Lady Gaga. Smash it, smash it, probably. I'm not going to change my mind, Brian. Smash it, smash it. Um, Mark, where do you want to play? You haven't played before? Uh, what country? Yep. I would like to play... Pick a country, any country. It looks like they are the creases of your forehead. Do a <laughs> do a concentration phase with it on. No, see, it on. I don't cre- I, see, I crease that way a concentration, and then it's a surprise that you get the, the other ones. Um, where would I like to play? Where would I like to play? Like, you know, Brian, I'd like to play Ireland, because um, we've, <laughs> we've never seemed to play there, um, even though one of the members... Quite possibly two of the members, two are right. Irish heritage or 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 are indeed Irish. Yeah, so Ireland would be pretty sick. It would be nice. Um, Lee, what are you listening to now that we should be listening to as well? Oh, do you know what? Actually, Brian, I'm gonna quick fire round just for you. Yeah, I had this on today. Lady Gaga. It's an absolute cracker. Dire Straits. No, yeah, no, Lee, you're absolutely right. He's an absolute fucking cracker. Yeah, absolutely yeah. unbelievable. First yeah, side yeah. is only two songs, but they're yeah. the best two songs on the whole album. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. What well, Alchemy Live as well is an absolute fabulous piece of work. I well. see. Dire Straits for life, bro. Oh yeah. Um, Mark Dream collaboration. See, you got to be careful with these answers. I'm sure at one point I said Kanye West. Jesus, do you know what I mean? Up age, that is like milk. Um, Lady Gaga. She probably eats babies now, don't she? So, yeah. Lady Gaga eats babies. Oh, does, like, oh. Um, dream collaboration would be. Phone goes. Hello, Mark. Would you like to work with me? And you go. Oh my God, it's. I didn't expect that. Um, Apex Twin would be pretty sick. Oh, yeah, that would be good. That's I was good really one. hoping you were going to say Craig David. I just <laughs> really wanted it. Lee, the best album of this year. The best new album you heard this year. Did you listen to any oh. new music this year? Yeah, but I, I don't remember anything. So I'll just have a look. It wasn't Dice Straits. Yeah. What are you on about? Squirrels. They haven't made a new album for years. Hey, every time I listen to them, they're new to me. Scroll through your iTunes, buddy. What do you got? About I know he is. I know he is. Uh, it Ooh. turns out that I haven't got anything new on there that I have enjoyed. Go on, new Def Leppard album this year. Did you not like it? No. No, I did not. Wonder why. No, no surprise there, was there? <laughs> um, Mark, what was the strangest thing you put in your mouth this year? Um, baby hair clip. Uh, no, it wasn't. It's not a baby. You clip a baby's hair, do you? It's pink, isn't it? And you've got a four year old girl in your house. I kind of thought it might be hers. Are you? She's, no, she's, she's a child, man. She's a child. Yeah, she's a toddler. She's not the big child. Um, uh, my child, uh, my, my baby vomited into my mouth the other day. That was that was pretty wild. Yeah, I've had that. Not of your baby. Like, you know, doing you know, the like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, and then he just went pretty. We well, shake him up. I go, hey! Yeah. Someone goes, I just eat him. Oh. Really sure it is. Um, the or Lee, your favourite film of this year? But I, I think I've just asked you that already, haven't I? We've already done okay. it. This sort of film I'm going to watch tomorrow. Mark, Mark your favourite TV show that you watched this year? <laughs> did you watch any TV shows this year? No, he did not. Did he not? Of course not. Because he can't, because it was um, CBeebies. No, uh, let me explain what happens, right, in in my life. Um, I love music. I love, I ruddy love the stuff. I absorb my life entirely. I never get an opportunity for, no, um, uh, fucking Bluey, Bluey sick. It's actually good. I mean, the, the only issue I have with Bluey is, there's like 
every couple of shows there's a weird like neoliberal message it's a bit like don't pay attention to that kids okay it's a bit like nah nah that's not right but um but it's it 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 fun and so he's a, she sorry is a wee australian dog um and she lives with her mom and her dad and her sister called bingo um, sorry. it's very wholesome it's very funny actually you'd like it very funny okay. lee what's the funniest thing that happened on tour this year dev shoes toilet I mean, it was it was already answered. He he answered that. Let me answer Lee's question. No, that what well, he answered your question. I no, you. no, no, because he answered. He answered I'm not going to answer for him. Actually, one of the funniest things that happened was when we were playing Sydney. Um, we started doing this like uh, the Aussies love to do a shoey. Oh, this is and good. Some, and someone got. Shoe? It's where you put a pint in the shoe and then you drink it out of the shoe. Someone else's shoe. Someone else's shoe. Someone else's shoe. And then, so we, we did that and everyone was like, yeah, some guy did the shoe. Yeah. I think Joe and him did the shoe together. And then a guy threw his prosthetic leg up on the stage and, jo- and John <laughs> did a leggy. <laughs> leggy. Yeah, which was pretty great. Yeah, that's, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Um, Mark, your favourite Idols video? Was it one of these weird ones? <laughs> or was it when it when they were weird? Oddly enough, I, I, I don't actually enjoy videos at all. Um Go so on. uh the one that I'm not in, great. I'm not in the great video, which is great. No, you wasn't, was you? By the Clava girl. That's Once right. again, I phoned it in and got someone else to cover for me. <laughs> Part-time idol. Lee. Do an impression of Mark. Oh, yeah. So we're going to crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, your last question, and I'll leave you to life. Um, where do you think you'll be in 10 years' time? How old will you be in 10 years' time? 40 what? 45. 45. You sure? Yeah. Unless there's some kind of weird anti-aging thing that happens, gets invented in the next 10 years, that would be pretty sick. What age would you be if you could make yourself just permanently be that age? That's a good one. 30. 40 odd. I mean, oh, that's good. Yeah, no, not 30. 40. When you get 40, is a lot better than 30. Shit like yeah, that. Your body's better at 30. It's not early 40s, it's not bad. You just know who you are at 40. You don't give a fuck anymore. You're mm. like, well, it's not trying to press anything or anyone. I am me. And then you yeah, stay with that. You stay with that for like forever. You don't I give mean, a fuck. I, I reckon I'd be 19, just like thinking you're a god. It's pretty sick. Or so, forever? Yeah, it'd be sick. <laughs> Every day, like, just like <laughs> not getting anything. It's pretty sick. That wasn't the question anyway, Mark. Where do you think you'll be in what do you think you'll be like in 10 years' time? Um, I think I'll be basically we'll be doing golf kitchen, Brian. Yeah, but, of course. Um I'll you'll be, be a hundred times more cantankerous. You'll not be able to do joint interviews because me and Lee won't converse even over Zoom. No. Um and uh, you would have done some weird sitar album on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would have done the I will, you know what? I will do it with him, but like Jesus. this. <laughs> and and then when I want to come back on, I think Bowen should leave. So I'm gonna cut. It's my turn now. There we go. Is he gone? Is he done? Yeah. Not, I haven't muted myself. Though mind. Oh, he can hear me. Can he? I'm going home. <laughs> uh, yeah, I reckon that. I reckon that. I reckon like idols will probably still be talking about it in ten years. And I reckon it'll be uh I wonder what I was saying harder like when you're all in your mid forties. What some of you get into your late forties. Interesting, yeah. eh? Oh fuck, I'll be sixty by then. Fuck that. Lee, what do you think you'll be like in ten years' time? Same. <laughs> same t shirt, same Bon Jovi t shirt. He'll have way more fancy photographs behind him in his in his flat. 
my photos. This this is fancy. This is Ed Norton. So you said you love way more of them. You love like, I love, I love way more of them, mate. Do you want to see my favorite photo in the in the in the house, Brian? Go on. It's the best. Photo. It? it is one of mine. Can you see it? No. 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 Oh, it's green. What this is, is it? Sad, this. What was it? I'm going to show you again. Watch this. I got. I got. I got this. Watch this. Here. <laughs> Look at that. I could have done that all along. All the while. There we go. Can you see I that one? I still can't. I can see it. I can't work out what it is. Oh, I know what that is. That's uh, is that Jeremy running up a abandoned water park? Abandoned water park in the states. Yeah. That's fucking sick. Nice, nice. That, that's, that's a fond memory of touring. Yeah, I remember that. That was White Claw Day as well. We drank a little bit of White it Claw. It was, yeah. <laughs> we were driving through America, Brian, and we discovered this. Uh, there was like a water park that had been abandoned, like right next to the motorway. And we'd already been drinking lots of White Claw. Is like, a, I think they've got it over here now. It's like a alcoholic seltzer. I call it sparkling water. Um, so we were well into that. And then we we climbed over, we scaled the wall of this abandoned theme park and we kind of went around a water band of water park, kind of doing it, pulling stunts, doing japes, you know. He kicked a flip. Kicked a flip. Um yeah, could we and Lee and Lee documented it and put it on his wall. That's all right. Do nice. you know what? Do you know what we're going to be in ten years' time? Lee's going to release a really good photo um, book of his time with idols. But you know what, Brian? All the photos will be weird. They'll yeah, be a they're, bit weird. They'll all be, they'll be black and white and lots of concrete. Be like, I've I've seen his Instagram. I just follow it because it's like courteous to do so. But I don't understand any of the pictures on it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> It's like a shot of a bit of a bridge, uh, or a bit of a chair. Yeah, he never, he never has, he never has the whole, the entire of anything, does he? You can't give him everything, Brian. No, Jeez, think, is, I, 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 is it they've got their own eyes. Yeah, but the... I always think, is it arty or is his eyes shite just shit? Well, <laughs> he can't work. He's thinking, I've got. That I, every time I leave stuff. the house without my glasses, I'm like, oh, <laughs> get out. Yeah, well, up. At least I've captured it. <laughs> captured it beautiful, beautifully framed. I think I've got it. Yeah, I'm not. And it's nice, Lee. It's nice. Honestly, I've always well, liked. It. Yeah, nice. Lee. Lee will be on you Zoom mean. like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Brian. <laughs> it's unique. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Mark Lee, thank you very much. I'm going to let you go now. Thank you. Um, um, have a lovely Christmas with the children. Mr. Bowen, hey y'all. Have a safe trip back to Germany tomorrow. Um, enjoy Wait, your weird, you. weird Christmas Eve presents and no roast dinner. I well, know, strange, isn't it? I'll think of you when I'm eating my roast dinner. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. what do they do? Qu presents on Christmas Eve and no roast dinner. What do you do Christmas Day then? You. He cries. Yeah, I basically cry. Go for a walk. Take photographs in black like, and white. Brian was asking me before we started, like, uh, you know, what's so different about German Christmases? But you know, my 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 whole life experience of Christmas is getting up in the morning, you do presents, then you eat an enormous amount of food, roast roast dinner, then you go to sleep for a bit, and you play a game with your family and get angry and go home. That's it. You gotta have an argument, but that's not how they do it in Germany. You go for a walk and eat venison. We ate venison last year. Eat venison. I mean, I've, I, I, mean, I don't mean the rules. Why do you, you, for example, and why are you involved in some cultural exchange and having a fight or something? I'll try it this year. You should I'll throw some... down. I'll throw down. Not even. Spray. I'll make. I, do you know what? I'm going to make some roast potatoes and just throw them at someone's face. Charlotte's yeah, dad. I'm going to take her there. Not family, mate. It's never so that good. 
Actually, no, don't. You shouldn't waste roast potatoes. They're one of the best. No, I'll eat them. I mean, if I'm going to make them, I'm eating them. Lob the venison at someone. I mean, they're basically crisps, right? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I mean. And on that note, on that, on that note, I'm going to say good farewell to you. Thank you very much for your time. Big wave, Mark. Big wave. You've got to do it. Wave to the people. Bye. Bye. Cool. Bye. 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 Bye.